Now, this is going to be my first Sinner's Guide for Path to Nowhere. Now, when it comes to the next banner that's going to come up, I did say it, it's going to be Oak Casket, but some players are telling me it might be Baiji. So they, we might have two off-banner characters back-to-back. -back. I don't know. Uh, it, it, they could be wrong. I could be wrong. It depends. But if that's the case, let me introduce Baji. So Baji is an assassin and she does basically physical damage. Uh, her main purpose in battle is, of course, dealing damage and breaking cores. She's so actually one of the best core breakers in the game. And also one of the few sinners in the game that can crit. Now, when it comes to her overall performance, keep in mind that this is an S rank sinner. And because she's an S rank sinner, getting her shackles is one of the going to be one of the hard parts about it uh the good thing about baji is that even at one shackle she does great if you can get all five again phenomenal the more shackles the better but trying to get that one shackle i'm going to explain why in just a second is probably the most optimal way for you to go about it especially if you're trying to get this character one of the first things i'm going to be mentioning first is of course the skills all right now when it comes to skills um i'm going to feature a how I would normally do it because I used to do guides for characters in other games in the past. So one of the things I would do is I would just read out the skills and then just basically tell you their function in overall battles. Uh, when it comes to Path to Nowhere, uh, a lot of players do ask, uh, what skills should I level up first? And that's a reasonable question because, you know, materials are scarce. You want to just pump in materials onto the skills that are worth it in the beginning and then pump it on into the other ones. So one of the things I'm going to do first, I'm going to be basically breaking down the skills and then I'll tell you oh, when I invest this one first and then this one second, you can let this one go up to a certain level and then invest it later. Uh, let me know if you like if you guys like this method better or just just want me to just straight out tell you uh, just work on this one, this one, and then that's it. You don't want me to read the descriptions of the skills. You know, it's up to you guys. Again, I'm just doing this because I used to do this before. So I'm going to go with that method. If you guys don't like it, just let me know down in the comment section below. Shadow attack is her normal attack. So it tells you right here, her skill range is just across. So basically she's here. She cannot hit at, at, in, an, in the next mode. She does three attacks. And again, she deals physical damage. Keep that in mind while, when using Bajis that uh, you can't mix her up with a team that deals magic damage because then she won't be amplified. Basically, it. She, she does three attacks. The higher you level her up, the, the higher level up the skill, the more her normal attacks, normal attack damage will deal. Tempest is her her special and is her core breaking skill. It's a pretty good one. So as soon as she activates her basically her special Tempest, she'll gain like three stacks. And while those, while those stacks are activated, she gains a 15% crit rate bonus for for 10 seconds. This is while you know she procs it early on. The three stacks are basically when she moves from from square to square. Uh, she will basically break course. The good thing about this one is unlike other assassins, for example, Labyrinth, which and where she needs to break a core before she can break another one. Uh, even if she can't break the target, she can still continue breaking course, which is a pretty nice one, actually. It's like pretty nice. And then an extra 15% crit. Uh, again, when it comes to Baji, she's one of the few characters that can actually get to 100% crit. <laughs> I'll, I'll mention that in just a second. So as soon as she activates her 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 S two, uh, she'll gain fifty percent crit. Efficient raid is it's not it's not a bad one, but it's, it's one of those skills that you don't have to worry about leveling up early on. Basically, what this does is that while she waits and she's steady and doesn't move for for every ten seconds, she'll gain a stack at a max proc of two stacks equals twenty seconds. As soon as she moves, hence uh, let's say she activates her special uh, Tempest. She activates it, she'll gain an attack bonus times the number of poise stacks she has on her. So, for example, if she waited 20 seconds and she's about to move and she procs it, for right now at level 5, she'll gain an extra 14, almost 15.6% extra attack. And that goes all the way up to 10.8% at level 10. So, an extra 21, 21.6% 21 extra attack at level 10. It's not bad. It's not a bad one, but she can't move for 20 seconds. Or she can move. If she has one stack, but she'll only get the, the base, the base percentage. Warm up exercise is probably the, the primary skill you want to level up first. Warm up exercise, what this does is that she, her crit increases by the number of what level it's at. So it goes up to 40%, which is great. Again, 40% crit just, just for existing. That's awesome. 
And of course, every time she crits, uh, she gains one energy. Uh, this uh, one energy uh, recovery procs every four seconds, which is pretty nice. Again, so she's got an extra, if you can get this to level 10, that's 40% plus activating Tempest will get it up to 55%. It's pretty, it's pretty nifty. So those are the ones I would recommend uh, emphasizing on leveling up first. Tempest and warm up exercise and then shadow attack and then efficient raid. The reason why I say efficient raid is because early on you might need to move her a lot more often, which means you probably won't have her sitting there for 10 seconds or at max 20 seconds. Again, it depends on your playstyle. But those are basically the ones I would recommend you leveling up first. One more exercise, Tempest, Shadow Attack, and then Efficient Raid. That's it. <laughs> From here, I'm going to be talking about her Shackles. Now, of course, when it comes to Shackles, the more the better, right? But let's say you can't get that many. How many should you aim for uh, to get to go, to get by G? Kind of set it up at least at the very beginning. Try to get her to at least one Shackle. At the very minimum, one shackle. Primarily because it's at the start of the battle, she recovers one movement count every 15 seconds, which is great. Because her Tempest, her S2, uh, uses a movement speed. And she uses three every time she moves. So basically, this is why this is a really nice one. A real nifty one. Especially in content where your movements are limited. This is actually a really nice one to kind of make sure that you can still proc her S2 while not running out of movements basically so it's a really nice one to have of course the more the better at all the way max fat five shackles you'll get a 16 percent crit rate again that's adding to the 55 percent if you can get the s4 all the way to level 10 and of course her her tempest gives her an extra 15 plus an extra 16 from here it says when poised the required immobility duration is reduced to eight seconds so basically her immobility for poised at s3 Instead of being 10, uh, waiting every 10 seconds, now it's every 8 seconds. Two, two less seconds, it's not bad. Ultimate energy consumption reduced by 3 for her fourth shackle. Again, the main one you want to aim for is the first one. Uh, again, the more the better, but if you can get all five, uh, groovy, she's, she's, she's set. But if you can only get one, don't feel too bad. I think having just one is enough, but the extra 16% crit is not, it's not bad. It's actually pretty good. Now for crime brands. Now... Initially starting, if you guys are just starting out in Path to Nowhere, the first crime bands that you'll see your seal yourself equipping on her will be the East Side Dreams. This is a three part uh, crime brand set. Again, increase normal normal attack damage by 15%. This is basically baby's first crime brand, basically. Uh, her, her main crime brand is the Reunion Day. This is another three part crime brand set. And what this does is that it recovers three energy points when a normal attack lands a crit hit, which is perfect for her, as that can be triggered once every three seconds. Again, this is really good because it will help her proc her, her special a lot more often and a lot more frequently. Another good thing about this crime brand is that the third one gives her an extra 10% crit. So it's, it's really good to have actually for her. Now, when it comes to her exclusive crime brand, is it necessary to have? I don't recommend getting her exclusive crime brand right away because she needs to be able to have 100% crit. So not 100% crit, but enough stats and where she'll crit often. That's why I, I suggested leveling up that S4 first so that she can, you know, get that crit cracking. And then you get this uh, crime brand over here that gives her an extra 10% crit. And then plus the shackles again the more shackles the better uh things on second shackle you get an extra eight percent you want to get her into a position where she can crit often before getting her exclusive crime brand so basically what her exclusive crime brand does is that when baiji's crit rate exceeds 100 percent each one percent of excess crit rate will be turned to 0.6 percent attack so every time so as soon as she gets up to 100 percent crit she'll always crit right but that excess for every one percent more excess crit that she has it'll convert it into attack power instead now this is one of the exclusive crime brands that in the beginning again you don't really need it again you want to focus on trying to get that crit up as high as possible uh, before you start really investing into the into the exclusive crime brand i wish i knew that before i did this before i activated it but still it's not bad <laughs> it's still not a bad one again and, and at max she'll gain a one percent uh, per her excess crit which is not bad and since so she crits non-stop and uh, she her attack rate her attack power will go through the roof and just uh just a matter of hits you know so it's actually a pretty good exclusive crime brand but you want to get you want to get the setup ready ready to go you want to get the skill that s4 procced all the way leveled up all the way to 10 
you want to get you want to make sure you have her main crime brand set that re reunion day is the most recommended one to get an extra 10 percent shackles again you get an extra 16 percent by getting all five again you get you get eight just for two but 16 for if you have both of them on so that's the primary sets for uh for baji Again, Abaji is actually, I really love using Baji overall. I think she's a phenomenal center. Again, the main cons to an S rank center is the fact that they're S rank centers. So they take a long time to get their shackles, get their get the materials necessary to phase three them. And of course the requirements to level up these centers, the S rank centers are a lot more pricey <laughs> than the average centers. So that's the that's the main thing. Uh, again, the reason why I wanted to make this guide for Baiji one is my first one, so I kind of wanted to test the waters. And secondly, because I said that it, after Langley, it's actually going to be Baiji and not Oatmeal or or o Oat Casket. So that's why I'm like, okay, so if this character is coming out next, I want you guys to kind of get to know Baiji a little bit better. If you guys want to pull on this character, you guys kind of know what this character is all about and kind of her kind of how her set works. So that's it. Um, I do want to mention one more thing before I'm kind of cut it off. And that is, of course, recommending uh, centers in case you guys don't want to pick up by G, but do want to pick up a an assassin class center that is physical based. All right. Physical based assassin. So what other options do you have in case you don't want to pull for Baji, but do you still want to have something that's similar at a lower cost? And when it comes to assassins, all right, as physical assassins, all right, the ones that the community primarily recommends the most is, of course, I think it's McQueen physical. I believe she is physical. Yes, physical. McQueen is one of the ones that they recommend. Tetra, Labyrinth, and uh, Gekka. There you go. Perfect. So that's it. So those uh, those centers again, budget wise, Gekka and Labyrinth are the ones that they recommend the most. Labyrinth number one over Gekka. Uh, they, they recommend her the most over over those two and then of course when you have mcqueen labyrinth and uh yeah labyrinth and gecka I, I, I thought i said tetra no tetra and then mcqueen and then out of these two they recommend mcqueen over tetra so those are your options in case you guys don't want to pull for baji but still want to have a kind of like a different option for you guys a rank wise like i mentioned before mcqueen or tetra b rank wise labyrinth and gecka Gekka and Tetra sound very similar. That's why I got confused there for a second. Overall, that is it for Baji. If you guys have any questions regarding this center or anything else, let me know. If you guys want me to cover another center, uh, just let me know down in the comment section below. As you can see, covering centers is not that hard. And that's probably why I didn't want to do it. But the primary reason why I wanted to do Baji is because they told me that it's probably not going to be Oak Casket ne next. It might be Baji. So if you guys are looking to wanting to know what Baji is all about, you guys don't have her want to know how to kind of set her up uh this is uh, a way for me for me to guys kind of help you out a little bit should be it again let me know down in the comment section below if you want me to cover another center and uh should be it i really i really hope you guys enjoyed this guide and i hope to see you guys next time take care guys